every time that a person that is clean from selfish will is opening his mouth, so it's very important to listen, to hear him. It might be a righteous man that is always clean, and it can be a person that is not attached to that thing in that situation, so it's good to hear his opinion because he's not part of that scene, so maybe he will have a clean mind to be able to clarify for you what is right, what is wrong, and only because that he's not involved, that's why he's got the ability to answer. I have mercy for you and for the years that I was also not strong enough to say the truth that was very, very painful in the bottom of my heart. And there are many, many people around us that are closing our mouths from saying the truth. There are many, many people that are afraid to deal with the truth and they don't want to say the truth and they don't want us to say what that we feel and what that we think. And those people, they're so afraid that they chose to give up, to give up on, on their own happiness and they chose fear. And they think that because that they chose not to be happy, so now it's allowed for them to stop us from being happy as well. Happy doesn't mean dancing in the streets and clapping your hands and, and, and dancing on, on cars or whatever. You can also do that if it makes you happy, I don't mind. But happy means that you feel complete with yourself. And simcha There is no happiness that is greater than to clean yourself from all of the doubts and to know what the real truth is and to follow that truth and, and to feel good and right with yourself and to know, I know who I am, I know what I'm doing. That's the biggest happiness of them all. Now, the issue here is that we're talking in those very important, painful days, days of month of Av, before of Tisha Av, the ninth day of Av, that that day is reminding us and representing the two destructions and many others that happened to us through the years, thousands of years of of exile, of horrible sorrow and pain. And those days are reminding us of the destruction, of the pain, of the loss, of the blood, of the tears, of the screamings, of the hunger, of the cold, of the hot, the heat, of the smoke, of all kinds of constrictions and sorrow that we went through through those horrible years of exile and we're still in the exile, we're still suffering. Every single one of us inside of our hearts there is such a pain, such a horrible feeling of, of sorrow, of sadness, of bitterness, horrible feelings of <coughs> separation, of loneliness, of, of darkness and for most of us it's even hard to even like, should I even start thinking about it, reminding myself of my own sorrow, my own shame, my own pain, maybe it's better to forget about it, to depress it, to push it even harder than I already did. That's a lie. That's not the truth. The truth must be said even if it will kill us. 
Because if it's the truth, so that's the only reason that we have to live for is the truth. I'd rather to die now while saying the truth than to live all of my life as a liar. I'm never going to be happy if I'm going to know that I'm lying to myself and not saying the truth. Which truth? The whole truth about everything, in every situation. Now, it's not my fault that you came to my class, that's your issue. I didn't even invite you to come. You have a problem with Bala Bait. Like, I'm just a guest here and there was no free seat so I'm standing. But I'm calling you and I know that I'm challenging you. But because that I am doing it myself, that's why I'm going to respect you and I'm not going to judge you like you don't have the vessels that I have. And I'm going to try to present to you the same questions that I'm going through in my life. And I also, like you, read all of those amazing books that are saying that you just need to say thank you, that you just need to praise Hashem and to thank Him, and that it's all for the good. Trust me, I read those books. I know what it's all talking about. I've been to those classes. I heard that information. But I'm still stuck with no answer. Maybe I'm lack of faith, maybe I have more to learn. I'm not doubting that at all. But I want to ask you, how can it be that we will have something in our hand that we will call it the Creator, Father in Heaven, that we're going to claim and going to say that we believe that He's got all the powers in the world, that He's Kol Yachol. He is able to redeem us, He is able to save us, to protect us, to heal all the sick, to give money to all the poor, to give houses to all the homeless, to support all of the ones with the emotional pain and sorrow, to protect us in every dark day, in every hard hour, in every situation. And He is not. Right? I'm not the only one that thinks that He is not. Actually, he's not. Some of us went through accidents, some of us went through divorce, went through pain, through shame, through, through insulting, through many kinds of illnesses, weaknesses, very painful hours, very humiliating moments in our lives. And Hashem was there witnessing, witnessing all of that pain and letting us go through all of that pain. And now, my only question to you is not if he is good or not, Hasu Shalom. I believe also that he is good. But I'm asking you, can you say that he is good and that it was all for the best, all for good, and not to lie while saying that? That's what I'm asking. Ask yourself, can you really say, I know for sure that it was all for the good? If your answer was, yes, it was worth it, means I'm ready to go through it again, because it's worth it. If now I'm going to tell you to push 1,000 pounds, and it's very a lot of effort for you, it's very hard. I'll tell you to work for 24 hours, not to eat, not to drink, and not to sleep, and not to rest, but in the end of those 24 hours, you have a check of one hundred one million dollars. Great, that's a check. You know, you, it's cash. You're gonna receive one million dollars on 24 hours of crazy labor. You're gonna do it? You're gonna say yes. For sure, you're gonna do it. And now, if in the next day I'm gonna come to it, he said, again, you can do it again. You're gonna say yes, of course, please. If you have another day like that, I'm the first one. You already went through it. It's worth it. You're gonna take it. Now I'm going to ask you, are you ready to go through the same humiliations again? All the sorrow that you remember, now are you ready to go through it again? So the answer is no, I know, it's obvious. So it means that you don't really feel that it's worth it. So I'm just saying that you cannot say that it's all for the best, that it's all for the good, 
that I call it Tova. Not because it's not, because we have not reached that level to say it with a full mouth, with a full heart. Our heart is not holding in that level to say that. I'm not saying it's not true. I just say that we cannot see it. And that's the truth. So now, if you cannot see it, and you're going to claim to see it, yeah, I saw it, I saw that light, I saw Hashem is good, and now you're lying. Because you're not accepting on yourself the way that He's leading you, the way of His supervision, the private individual supervision, the unique one that He chose just for you to go through that crazy humiliation in the middle of the night, in that night that you know, that you remember what you went through and how many tears you poured and you cried and how many nights you woke up in the middle of the night and remember the same pain and the same sorrow and you're not accepting it, that's the truth. So now I'm asking you why to lie and to pretend to be someone that you're not. I'm not holding in that level and I have a problem with Hashem. I love Hashem. I can say that without lying. I love Hashem, but I'm also upset at Hashem. Very. I have issues with Hashem. I have questions on Hashem. I don't have no doubt that Hashem Barach is the one that is supervising on me. I believe that Hashem Barach is 100% of this creation. I can swear on that to Hag Sefer Torah and to tell you that, for sure. Because I know that even now I'm talking those words that I'm saying, I will never going to call them words of Torah. Those are my words. And I'm saying those words in front of Hashem right now. So. I won't change my speech to you and will change it in front of Hashem. Once in my Ibadadut, I was expressing my sorrow and I was arguing with Hashem and I made a huge fight with Hashem in a very hard night that many, many people of our nation suffered in the Holy Land of Israel, many rockets and it was a very hard time a few years ago. And I was fighting with Hashem. And then Hashem said, suddenly foreign thoughts start attacking me. Because I was complaining. Because I had some arguments. I had some things that I felt like saying. And I said them. I dared and I said them. And then fears came and started attacking me. How can you say those things? And there are righteous people. And then I felt like, okay, so why the righteous people are not helping me? Why they're not backing me up? Why I cannot see their support? And then I had a complaint on those righteous ones. And then I felt like, hey, what are you doing? You have complaints on the tzaddikim. You might be punished. And then I said, okay, now someone is threatening me. So should I be quiet because I'm afraid? No. I said, no. That's the truth. If that righteous man would stand here in front of me, I am able and ready to tell him the same words because I was not lying. I was not talking behind his back. When I said those words, I was just opening my heart and sharing the truth that I felt, that I felt neglected, that I felt left alone, that I felt so horrible. And I wanted to say the truth, so I expressed it. I just said it. So now if that righteous man would be here, I would tell him the same thing. So I'm not afraid of the tzaddikim. I don't feel I need to be afraid of the tzaddikim. I need to love the tzaddikim. So I do. And I'm not afraid. Okay, so I solved that problem. And then I start thinking, but you might be punished. And maybe you're going to die. Or maybe one of your children, Chas Shalom. Or maybe your wife. Or maybe who knows what. You know those thoughts, right? Everyone has those foreign thoughts. Those are foreign thoughts. Those are not holy thoughts. Those are fears. Those are demons that are attacking your thoughts. Those are not holy thoughts. Those are thoughts that are separating you from Hashem and not bringing you closer to Him. Even if they're claiming to bring you closer, no, no, don't talk, no, no, don't say, no, no, don't do, no, no, no. No, they're rejecting you because they're separating you from your truth. And you can be close to Hashem only when you're a person of truth that is saying the truth and not afraid to say the truth. 
When Hashem said to Moshe Rabbeinu, I'm about to kill them all, and he was talking about us, Moshe told him, kill me first. You're not touching no one. You want to kill? You want to start? Kill me. Erase me from that holy book that you wrote. That you wrote, he said. Not that I wrote. And he was the one that wrote. He was the one that Hashem gave him the power and the authority to write the first Bible. But he gave it. Hashem said, Zichru Torah Moshe, you need to remember the Torah of Moshe. But Moshe said to Hashem, no, it's your Torah. If you want to kill, so it's your Torah. I'm sorry, I'm not part of that. Do you have the courage to say those things to Hashem? If not, so work on that. Because we must be people of truth. And we cannot lie to ourselves. If you're so righteous and holy, and you really decided to accept on yourself that sorrow of your suffering, okay. If you can handle it, okay. But, you know, if you will ask me, I'm not able to deal with mine, and I'm not allowing you to accept mine. I'm not allowing you, as my friends, to accept the sorrow that I'm going through. If I see you in pain, I'm not accepting it. I'm not allowing myself to accept the fact that you are suffering because I care about you, because I love you. So I cannot accept the fact that you are suffering. When you're suffering, I have a problem. What's my problem? That you're suffering. So who I'm going to call? Ghostbusters, they're not answering. So I'm going to call Hashem. I'm going to call Hashem. And what I'm going to tell you, hey, I have a problem. I'm not allowing you to do that anymore. You have to cancel those judgments above the head of that sweet person. He didn't do anything. He's innocent. He's not aware even to his actions. If you're upset, so okay, let's deal with it. Let's think about it. How to cancel your anger. But it's not her fault. It's not his fault. You and I, we have a problem, and we need to sell it, we need to solve it, we need to fix it. Because it cannot go on, it cannot continue. And then when those thoughts came to me and told me, you might die, someone else, so I said to Hashem, what are you trying to shush me, you're trying to, to, to make me shut up, shut my mouth? No way! The same words that I'm telling you here, I'm ready to say in court in heaven. What's the difference? That's my thought. That's my heart. And I'm telling you that as long as we're going to sit and be quiet and going to play the game of being frum, of being charedim, of being politically correct, of being cowards, we're not going to bring no redemption to our nation. If you want really to bring redemption to the world, you need to fight. And with who you need to fight, you think that it's kfirah? Like I said before the class, the door is open. No one is obligated to listen to my class. I'm not forcing no one. If you think that what that I'm saying is not 100% the will of Hashem in Barach, I ask you to live. For you, for your own sake. Don't damage your faith. Don't put doubts into your holy faith. But if you find wisdom in what that I'm telling you, so listen all the way, listen to your inner voice, and try to find yourself in that place. How can it be that the Creator, the Father of Mercy, the one that you claim to believe that He is all good, is destroying you one day after the other? Is causing you so much pain, so much sorrow? Now, you can say it's the evil inclination. You can say it's the Yetzirah, it's the devil, it's the snake, it's the dark side, it's dark Vedah. Okay, great, I hear you. I don't buy that. Why? Why I don't buy that? Because I heard that there is no one else except of him. And if he gave power to the dark side to do something in this world, so I have a problem with him. I am going to the roots. I'm going to the source of the problem. Where my problem starts with the Creator Himself, because in Him I trust. In Him I believe. 
And if I have an issue with anything in this world, I don't have money. I'm going to go and ask my parents. No, I need to go and ask Hashem. My wife, she is upset. I need to go and complain why you're sad, why you're upset, why you're angry. No, I need to go and solve the problems. What's the reason that she's angry? I need to solve it. If I'm the problem, I promise to you, she will testify. I'm going to break myself to pieces until I'm going to find the problem. It cannot be that we're going to blame a child that doesn't have no clue, no understanding on his actions. Someone above him that is in charge of him, that influence on him, he is the one to, to, to blame. And if you cannot blame me as a parent, because I, am, I was also a child, so you cannot blame my parents because they were also children, so you need to go to the roots, and the roots is the only one, it's Hashem. So we have a problem with Hashem. We have a problem with Hashem, but, and that's the secret of redemption, and that's the secret of the Geulah Shlema for our nation. That the truth is that Hashem Ibrahim agree with me. He doesn't have no problem with one word that I said until now. So we're in a good place, and I'll answer to you and explain to you how. Because Hashem Barach is telling us one thing, and we don't grab it, we don't understand it. But He is still saying it. Hashem Barach is arguing with Knesset Israel. Hashem Barach is saying to us, Shuvu Elai v'ashuva Elechem. When you're going to come back to me, I'm going to come back to you. But what we are answering him, no, no, no. Hashivenu elecha venashuva. Bring us back to you, and we're going to come back. Sounds amazing, right? Sounds like a perfect argument. He's saying, do tshuva, and then I'm going to come to you. And we are saying, bring us back to you, and we're coming. Great. Sounds perfect. But we missed something very important. Hashem, He knew what He was saying when He said, Shuvu Elai v'ashuva Elechem. Hashem Yitbarach used the same language, the same word, to explain to us what we need to do and what He going to do in the end. He used the same word, Tshuva. He said, when you going to come back to me, I'm going to come back to you. Going to come back to you doesn't mean bringing money, bringing gifts. When we going to come back to Hashem, what does it mean? That we're going to do tshuva, right? We're not going to bring our money. We're not going to sacrifice sacrifices. We're not talking about waking up in the morning. We're talking about tshuva. Shuvu elai. What does it mean, shuvu? Do tshuva. Confessions. Crying to Hashem. Hashem, I'm sorry. Hashem, I'm apologizing. Hashem, I regret. Great. Amazing. That's your job. Do it. But then Hashem told you. And then I'm going to come back to you. And he used the same word. Ashuva elechem. I'm going to do tshuva. Hashem going to do tshuva? What does that mean? Is Hashem going to do tshuva? How can Hashem do tshuva? Hashem never seen. Hashem is perfect, right? We believe that Hashem is all good. Hashem is one. Hashem is great. Hashem is kind. He's the source of love. So why He needs to come back? Hey, where have you been? If you went somewhere, we want to know. Why did you went? Why did you go? He did. He went. He's hiding his face from us, remember? Is it good? Is it allowed? Is it fair? When Hashem said to Moshe Rabbeinu that he is about to hide his face from us, so Moshe Rabbeinu had that courage to tell Hashem, but you turned their face away from you. Why are you blaming them? You woke up things in this world to distract their thoughts from you. And that's why they went. Because you brought all of those things. You offered for them a world that is full with options, with opportunities, with colors, with smells, with, with pleasures, with things that are going to distract their thoughts from you. So why are you blaming them? How can you blame that kid? How can you force that kid not to sin? 
You put him to grow, grow up in a, in a big city, in a huge town. Many, many people are doing whatever they want. Everyone are surfing and swimming and dating and clubbing and smoking and drinking. And now he, you must be righteous. And if you aren't going to be righteous, I'm going to punish you. Are you crazy? How can you expect him not to sin? You didn't brought him to live in a holy house, in a holy neighborhood, in front of the holy temple. Three times a year he goes into the holy house and, and sacrifice with his father. No, we're in the exile and Hashem is with us and he knows our sorrow. And when they're suffering, he feels their sorrow, he feels our pain. And he knows our desires and our lust and all of our inclinations. He knows exactly what we're going through. So how can he blame us? He's not. He's not arguing and he's not complaining. Who is complaining? People. People are blaming themselves and blaming you. Slaughtering themselves, their wives, their children, and then when they're finished, they go to slaughter their public. All of their employees, all of their students, all of their followers, all of their communities, and killing them, one after the other. Oh, you're a sinner, you're breaking Shabbos, you're violating Shabbos, oh, you're eating trade, oh, you must divorce your wife, oh, you must take your children, you have to throw him out of the house. Oh, nice, you're representing Hashem, do you remember? Do you remember who you're working for? You're serving Hashem or you're serving the Malach Mavet, the angel of death? Who is your boss? Who are you working for? Arrogant people with very low self-esteem that found a way to climb on the backs and on the heads of other weak people and to destroy their lives and to build themselves on the destructions of communities, of poor, broken people. And now they be, will be called rabbis and teachers and mentors and guides and I don't know what. And they're going to destroy us all, one after the other. One house after the other with their silly advice, with their crazy, bad, negative spirit of destruction going to break one spirit and then going to break the next and going to give classes online and going to destroy, destroy others and others and not all of the rabbis, not all of the leaders, not all of the teachers, just those ones that we're not allowed to listen and to follow their advice. So if you know one, so there is only one thing to do, don't listen to him anymore. Don't follow his crazy advice. If you felt that there was one person that was destroying you, humiliating you, a person came to me and tells me, I'm working in an office, I'm making a lot of money, but my boss is humiliating me, he's insulting me, he's shaming me in front of the other employees, and it's every day. What, what, what are you doing over there? Who gave him the permission? Who gave you the, the, the permission to suffer? And if you're not fighting for yourself, you must fight for the second one that will come and join that office. Because he's going to be destroyed as you. And you must fight for him if you don't want to fight for yourself. Great, you're righteous, you're able to suffer. Great, you want also. Okay, great, I don't know why, but okay. Let's say that you're ready, that you accepted it. Okay. But why do I need to suffer because of, of, of your holiness, of your righteousness? Why my friend, why my brother that wants to join your office, he needs to suffer as well. But if you're not going to warn him, if you're not going to rebuke your boss, if you're not going to stand like a stable, strong pillar and going to say the truth that must be said, nothing going to change. And also in front of the kings of all kings, and that's my problem. Why it's my problem? Because I don't have no boss. And I don't have no one. I have only Hashem. So all of my problems I'm aiming to Him. But He caused that situation to me and I feel that He wants to heal me. And I'm going to ask you, if now, let's say that I hurt you in a way. I insulted you. I did something against you. I stabbed you in the back. And now I came to you and you're very upset. You're angry. You don't know what to do. 
You wanted to kill me first. In the beginning, you wanted to kill me. And then I came and I'm apologizing and I'm sorry. And I'm asking, is it too late now to say sorry? And you say, no, it's okay, you can apologize. And I'm apologizing and I'm saying, I'm sorry. I regret. I was wrong. I was horrible. I hurt your feeling. I'm sorry. Can you forgive me? And they say, look, I'm going to think about it. I accept your apologizing. Thank you. It's okay. And then you're going to see I start crying. And I'm telling you, but listen, really, I don't know if you understand how bad I feel with myself. I regret. I'm so sorry. I'm apologizing. I didn't mean to hurt you so much. I, I, I was so silly. I was so stupid. I'm apologizing. Please accept my apologizing. Really, from the bottom of my heart. I hurt you and, and it affects your life and it destroyed so many days of your life and I didn't want to do that. I'm sorry. So then for sure you're already going to feel, okay, I can forgive him. He did tshuva. But let's say that now you're going to say, okay, I forgive you. My heart is clean. I love you. Everything is back to normal. And I'm going to start crying. And I'm going to tell you, no, I'm sorry. Please tell me what can I do for you. I must fix. It's not enough. I know you were crying. I know you were upset. People told me, they saw you, that you were so miserable in those days and it was all my fault. And I'm going to cry and cry and it's really going to be from my heart. What are you going to feel now? You're going to feel bad with yourself on being upset on me, right? But that's going to be the result. You, but I'm not hurting you, I'm just asking forgiveness. I didn't do anything bad now. I was just righteous, I was just good, I was just completing my tshuva, apologizing from the bottom of my heart, cleaning myself completely, and I didn't mean to hurt you at all. But now you're going to feel the sorrow, your inner sorrow, on the fact that you were upset, on the fact that you were angry at me. That you couldn't find a way to forgive me without me apologizing to you, right? Right. That's the meaning of what Hashem is telling us. When Hashem is saying, when you're going to come back to me, I'm going to come back to you, it means that when we're going to come to Hashem and going to complete our tshuva and really going to complete it, He will start feeling bad about His behavior while exiling us in the days of darkness. He will do tshuva. He will come back to us. Like the Hashem is saying, I'm asking from you to atone for me, to bring a sacrifice, to atone, to create forgiveness for me on the fact that I exiled my children. And Hashem is writing that in the Gemara Kedusha, it's written. And Hashem is saying, Oy lo le'av she'eglait banav, the father that exiled his children, that sent them away from his table, he's saying, Mal lo le'av she'eglait banav, he doesn't have anything. Hashem is empty-handed now. Hashem lost his children. There is a Midrash that is saying that Hashem it barach is coming, it's written in Tana de Be'liyahu. In the book that's been written by the righteous man named Anan that received all of his wisdom from that righteous man that we know, Elijah the prophet. He told him that book. And in that book it's written that Hashem Barach is like a husband that divorced his wife and his children. And once a year he is going to that intersection, to that place, that in that place he sent them away out of his house. And in that place he is standing and regret and cries on the fact that he exiled his children and his wife. And you know what his wife is saying to him? She's telling him, I'm not coming back. The Shekhinah is saying that Hashem Barach is cursing her. Me'ana li'nachem. She is refusing to accept his apologizing and his promises. And he's telling her, don't worry, 
my love, my daughter. I'm going to rebuild the temple. I'm going to open the sky for you. You're going to have so much. I'm going to give you things with no end. And you won't be able to say enough. The bounty will, will, will rise above your head. And she's saying, I heard those speeches. I don't want to hear it anymore. She's refusing to receive those promises. What is she saying? Keep your word. Redeem us. Stop talking. Start acting. You're talking and talking and talking. For thousands of years I hear those promises. Where's the redemption? Another kid died. Another house been destroyed. Another family lost their house. What are we talking about? I'm not here to receive no promises. That's part of the Shekhinah Kedoshah that he's saying. The Shekhinah Kedoshah is saying, Kalani me'roshi, kalani mizroi. When he is promising those promises to me, I feel like he's cursing my head. I feel like he's cursing my arms. That's the speech of the Shekhinah Kedoshah. Refusing to hear promises. I don't want to hear more promises. I want to see miracles. Now, if you're going to provide, I'm with you. If not, sorry. Too late. You missed the train. You missed the bus. I already went. If you're going to keep on beating up your children, I'm not coming back to live with you. If once again you're going to hit one of our children, I'm not living in the same house with you, she's saying. And he's keep on punishing he is keep on giving the power to the evil inclination to execute judgments and to bring them down to the world. Now, yes, you have a problem with him. Okay, now I'm happy that we're all in the same place. Now, before I was a weirdo that came into a house and started lecturing you all. Okay, but now we're in the same place. Now, that's our problem. We want to believe. We want to want to believe. Sometimes we even want to want to want to want to believe. Yes, because it's very hard to believe when you see something else with your eyes. But the faith is in the nights. And we must believe. And we must believe in what? That it's all for the best. That it's all for the good. Say it without lying. You still cannot. So don't say it. They were respecting me with their mouths, with their lips, but their heart is still far away from me. Hashem is not happy with that. That's not the will of Hashem. Hashem does not want you to lie. One doesn't want you to play polite, politically correct with Him. That's not what He wants. He wants the truth. And now if you have a problem, if I'm your best friend, I want to hear it. Or else we're not good friends. If I am your best friend, it means that I am open to hear all kinds of criticism. Every bad thing that you think about me. Why? Because I want to fix myself. That's why we're good friends. Because we decided to be together all the way. Not to separate, not in life, not in death, not in this world, not in the world to come. That's what we decided, right? Okay, so what we need? To be open, right? To talk, to discuss, not to be afraid. And not to be hurt and not to be ashamed. He will tell you, no, you're wrong. And he will tell you, no, you're wrong. And you're going to argue. Don't stop arguing. When my wife and I decided to, de to get married, I told her, listen, I know for a fact that we're going to have many hard hours, many, many hard days. But I'm asking you only one thing. Don't ever leave the house. I'll sleep on the floor. You will sleep on the table. We're not going to talk. We're going to fight for three months. We're not going to talk. Don't ever leave the house. Let's not talk in the house until we're going to solve the problems that we have. That's friendship. If she goes to hell, I'm going to hell with her. If I'm going to hell, she's going to, to save me. She's going with me. That's friendship. Now you're a friend of Hashem? Great. Don't leave him. What it means don't leave him? Always cheer him up. 
Always tell him good things as much as you can. But if you see that he's doing something wrong, you're his friend to open his eyes. And even if in the end he will show you that you were wrong and that you misinterpret his holy pure intentions, great! So say, you're right, I was wrong. I'm sorry. I surrender. I'm not here to fight. I'm just seeking for the truth. If you're going to bring an evidence to show me that I was wrong all the way, I'm going to accept it. I'm here for the truth. Not to justify myself, not to be right, not because I want to win. Even though that Hashem Barach is saying, that you need to praise the one that when you beat him, when you win him, and he's losing, he is happy. He's happy to lose because he's so humble. He's saying, Nitzchuni Banai, Nitzchuni Banai, they won. And he's happy because he's humble, because he's searching for the truth. And where the truth is going to grow from? From the ground, from the land, from the bottom, from those poor, broken hearted people like us. They've been crushed by the system and been crushed by life and by the exile and have scars to prove it. Emotional and physical scars that we're carrying with us. Evidence that we've been through the camps, that we've been through the subways, that we've been through hell of exile. That we suffered, that we're dead. But we want to live and we're expressing it. I once had a conversation with a very close friend of mine, that he was such a hard, hard nut to break. It was so hard with him. He was stubborn. He was arguing and questioning and doubting. The hardest questions I ever heard in my life, I heard from his holy mouth. And one time he asked me a question that I was not able to answer. And I'm that one that claims to have answers and that can answer and I have many, many success in that thing in my life, thank God. But in front of him, in that time, when he asked me that question, I was silent, I was mute, I couldn't speak, I didn't have an answer. I had to agree with him that I cannot expl explain Hashem. He said, maybe there is no Hashem, I didn't agree on that. But to bring him an evidence, a proof, no, there is, I couldn't. I could say, yes, there is. And that, that would be a lie. I didn't felt, I didn't find the answer to show him that it was the good expressing himself. So I had to be quiet. And then he looked at me. And he felt that I was embarrassed. And then he said, I want you to know, people like me that are asking hard, hard questions are not asking it because we don't believe. We just want to confirm the faith in a way that it will be 100% clear for us that there is a shame. But we don't want to be wrong. We want to see a 100% evidence to the fact that the shame is here. And then we will be quiet. They can ask you the hardest questions in the world. And their intention will be only to find a shame. And you might not understand it. That's how you don't understand yourself when you have doubts and when you're afraid. But I'm telling you, don't afraid to ask because you are talking to your Father. You're talking to Father of Mercy, that He is here for one purpose, for you. To answer you, to supply tshuva for us, to give us the answer. Tshuva is also to confess, but it's also to answer. When you're a Baal Tshuva, it means that you found the answer to all the questions. That's a complete Baal Tshuva. That he's got the answer, he owns the answer. And he's going with that answer, that answer to all of the questions. And canceling all the doubts, all the fears, all the stress, all the darkness. And as long as you don't have the answer, I'll tell you the reason for that. As long as you don't have the answer, it's only because that you haven't asked all of the questions yet. Because Hashem is close to everyone that will ask from Him with truth, that will call Him with truth. And when you ask, you're being answered. 
And we all experience that. When you talk about something, when the discussion is open, many, many things will come. Many, many things will rise. You're going to see a lot. Things that you don't know are the things that you haven't dared to ask yet. Why there is so much poverty? Why there is so much sorrow, so much pain, so many tears? Why my prayers are not being answered? Why her prayers are not being answered yet? But to go with those answers and with those questions until you're going to find an answer. And when you're going to ask, you will be answered. And when we all going to ask together, we all going to be answered together. So we must keep on asking. And to be afraid to ask, it's to walk away from Hashem. It's to give up on Hashem. It's to say, no. He's doing his thing and I'm doing my thing. It's to create a separation between him and you. A separation that he never desired. A separation that only people that gave up on life and gave up on us are creating. By saying, no, it's all for the best. No, it's all for the good. No. I know it's all for the good, but it's painful, so stop it. I know it's great, but I don't want it, okay? No, it's good for you. Make Aliyah. No, I'm not ready. No, it's good. You must go. No. It sounds like, like Holocaust. It doesn't sound like, like redemption. No, you must go. No, you have to go. No, it's good for you. Go, be a doctor. I, I don't want to be a doctor. Okay, so be a lawyer. No, I don't want to be a lawyer. No, but you must. It's a good paycheck. They're going to pay you. I don't want to be paid. No, you must. That's good. Those are good, healthy parents. That's a good way of education. You must learn Torah. You have to learn Torah. You have to cover your head. You have to keep Shabbat. You have to eat kasher. You have to do this. You have to do that. Wake up early in the morning. Go to sleep early. Tomorrow you have minyan. I don't want to do that. I don't feel like that's the will, Hashem. When Hashem is telling Moshe Rabbeinu, I'm sending my angels to protect you and I'm Israel, to walk with you toward the Holy Land, I'm sending my angels to protect you, Moshe Rabbeinu said, stop, stop, stop right there. We're not going nowhere. If you're not coming with us, versus Chumash, not the rebel go Moshe Kasuto. No, Chumash. Bible. Moshe is saying to Hashem Barach, if you are not coming with us, we are not going. That's it. Moshe, what's going on with you? Hashem just told you, he's going to protect you. No, no, no. Hashem, he realized that there is something missing here. So he's saying no. To who? To Hashem? Yes, to Hashem. Hashem gave him the holy tablets. He's carrying the holy tablets, going down from the holy mountain, all smoke and fire surrounding him. And then he sees Am Yisrael dancing, partying. What is he doing? He's breaking the holy tablets. Do you have the guts to do that? Do you have the courage to do that? I want to see you holding the first Sefer Torah being written by Hashem, tearing it to pieces. Do it. Can you do that? I want to see the biggest rabbi of this generation able to tear a Sefer Torah to pieces like Moshe Rabbeinu, not a Kafir. We're not talking about Yimach Shmo Bezichro, we're talking about Moshe. Moshe Rabbeinu, he took the holy tablets, handmade by Hashem, a stone that made by Hashem, being carved by the finger of Hashem, the thoughts of Hashem, the fire of Hashem, that Hashem was carrying it thousands and thousands and thousands of years before of creation. That was his wisdom, the most important thing for him. Chemdagnoza, an adorable thing, the charming thing that he was carrying. His wisdom, his face, his light, his Torah, Torah Chaim, the wisdom of life. And he smashed it to the ground. What? Moshe, what are you doing? Maybe Hashem told him to do it? No. Maybe there is a commandment to do it? No. Maybe it's written somewhere that you should do it? No. So Moshe, how did you came to that? Moshe realized, if I'm going to hand the Bible now to Am Israel, they're going to disgrace it. It's going to be a disgrace for Hashem. If I'm going to bring it back to Hashem and I'm going to tell him, Hey Hashem, I'm sorry, they're not ready, so it's going to be a shame to Hashem. So what did he do? Sacrificed himself. And said, okay, so I'm going to die. I cannot kill them. I cannot kill him. I'm going to kill myself. That's Moshe. 
He's ready to die. Every moment of his life he's ready to die. For what? For the truth. Because he knows better than what did Hashem even saying to him. He reads between the lines. He recognized the will of Hashem between the lines, between the verses, in the places that nothing is written. He sees the will of Hashem. And then Hashem tells him, I'm praising you, respecting you, and the fact that you broke the holy tablets. Great. Now let's see you break those holy tablets in your life. Now let's see you violate the rules that you feel that are destroying your life. Don't violate the rules of the Torah. Listen to the voice of Hashem. That's what I'm saying. Listen to Hashem. Because if now your wife told you, I am not keeping Shabbat. Bye bye. It's me or Shabbat. Now what are you going to do? If your wife is telling you, now I'm not eating kasher anymore. That's it. Finito la comedia. I'm not eating with you anymore. No more kosher in this house. Me or you, me or the food, what are you going to choose? You don't have an answer. You cannot answer that. Go to this rabbi, he's going to tell you to divorce your wife. Go to the other rabbi, he's going to tell you you're not allowed to divorce your wife. Okay, so what are you going to do? You need to choose, but I'm going to choose. You need to read between the lines. You must find your way. No one can answer you. You know what? Because that rabbi that will tell you to divorce your wife, he is not able to back you up. And that rabbi that will tell you, don't keep Shabbat, go with your wife, it's much more important, he also cannot back you up. So you are stuck in a situation that is dark, that you don't have no light, that kavua meorot, not the right light, not the left light, not the sun, not the moon. No answer. You lost. What you gonna do? Call me. I'll give you my WhatsApp. There is an answer. Where? Where is it written? Between the lines. You need to check with yourself who is that wife in that situation? What did I do until now that caused this situation to come? And from there, between the lines, you're going to find the answer. Are you loyal? Is she loyal? Are you honest? Is she honest? Are you pure? Is she pure? If one of you is wrong, you need to fight against that one. If she is poor and you're wrong, you need to fight yourself. If you are poor and she is wrong, you need to fight her. Great. But it will happen that you will find the right answer only in the end of the investigation. So for that you need to be a person of truth to make that investigation. To be ready to put yourself in the light in front of the mirror and to judge yourself and to slice yourself and to cut yourself to pieces to check. Maybe I was neglecting her. Maybe I didn't care about her. Maybe I was too pushy. Maybe I was too hard. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe I was evil. Maybe I was selfish. Maybe I'm just stupid and I don't know what to do with my life. It's also an option that we're both just dumb and we don't know what to do. So then you need to go to look for a wise person. Call me. <laughs> and I'll help you. I'll help you to find yourself. I'm not going to help you with the advice. I'm going to guide you to find the truth that is written between your lines, in your book. Look, search inside your own soul. Over there you can find the truth. I'm not supplying the truth. I can just let you know that the truth exists inside of you and you can find it. If you will be honest enough to search for the truth. But go all the way. Because the truth is over there. Where? very, very far, and also very, very close. One step after the other will bring you closer and closer to your truth. And you're going to find another truth, and another truth, and another truth, and another truth. And in the end, you're going to achieve the divine, ultimate truth. And met la mitah, the real truth, great, whatever. Whatever that's written in all of the holy books, you're going to achieve it. But you must start with one step. Which step? Honesty. Honesty. To be honest with yourself. With yourself. Not with the Torah. Not with Hashem. Not with the Rabbi. Not with the community. With yourself. Be honest. 
when you're really such a believer or that your faith, faith is shaky. If it's shaky, build it. Work on it. Don't claim to be strong. Don't praise yourself in something that you don't have. Don't justify yourself 24 day, hours a day claiming to be righteous, to be right, to be perfect, to be religious, to be free from birth, to be I don't know what, I'm a Balchuba, I'm Hasidic, I'm this, I'm that. I'm... Stop with all those titles, all those names. It means nothing. In the end of all time, Sofdavar, Hakol Nishma, everything will be heard. Every thought that you had, every doubt, every fear, every desire, every foreign thought that you had, everything that you did in darkness, behind the backs, when no one saw you, everything will be open, will be exposed. Why? To come to that embarrassing moment and to stand in front of all the world, all the creation, and Father in heaven, in top of everyone, and to see your lies, to see how low you were, we were. Why not to work on ourselves as from now, and to say the truth, I didn't respect you enough, I wasn't loyal enough to you, I disrespected you, I cared about myself, I was selfish, I'm sorry. And if really you will decide that you want to fix it and to work on it, there is a chance. You can do a lot to fix. Don't give up because of the effort, because of the suffering, because of the pain. Decide, I am healed till death, till the last moment of my life. I'm not backing off because it's the truth. And even if I messed up, so I'm going to be insulted. Do I want also to steal and also not to pay back? Okay, so I stole it. I took the money. Now it's in my head. So I need to give it back. You want to keep on hiding it? Keep on enjoying something that not belongs to you? Riding on the back of your beloved ones? Satisfying yourself instead of, of, of appreciating and loving people that lives with you in the same house? The sharing the same house, the same bed with you. How can we be so selfish and not to do whatever it takes to be people of truth? That's the only sin that there is, is to lie and not to be a person of truth. And not to say the whole truth. That the only sin is to lie. And the only mitzvah is to be honest. You have a solution. If you broke Shabbat, there is ways to fix it. There are ways to fix. If you ate something wrong, Trey, okay, there are things to do. You can fix. Tshuva is useful for everything. You can do Tshuva. Hashem gave you the Tshuva as a tool. It's not the way out. Okay, I'll do Tshuva. No. If you're not honest about your Tshuva, it's written that Kol HaOseh Omer Echta V'Ashuv and Mesopkim B'Yadol HaSot Tshuva. If he's saying to himself, okay, I'm going to sin, and then I'm going to do Tshuva, and it's going to fix, they're not going to let you do Tshuva. You're not going to do Tshuva. You're going to stand in front of Hashem in Judgment Day, and He's going to show you that your Tshuva was not the real Tshuva. You were confessing on the wrong things, you were not feeling no regret. Really, you didn't do tshuva. So it won't atone, it won't help you, it won't fix. They're not going to let you do tshuva if you're planning to sin and then to do tshuva. We are talking again about people that are really honest with their intentions, really want to fix, want to do tshuva. So now tshuva is useful for everything, for every sin, for every mistake, do tshuva. Really, it's a solution that Hashem gave us. So you violated rules, so you messed up, so you sinned, so you destroyed, so okay, I hear you, I've been to that place also. You're not the only one. You think I haven't messed up? I haven't sinned? I did. Today, not yesterday, not last year, not 20 years ago before my tshuva. I messed up today. Do you think that a person can stay holy all of his life and always pure? No! 
The verse is saying, and Sadika there is no righteous man that will walk on earth and will do only good and not gonna sin. It's not exist. David Amalek, King David did Shuvah. Avraham Avinu did Shuvah. Moshe Rabbeinu did Shuvah. Moshe Rabbeinu been punished on his sins, on his mistakes. Five times Moshe Rabbeinu failed in anger. And he been punished on lack of faith. Avraham Avinu been punished on lack of faith. You know what was the punishment of Abraham Avinu on his mistake? That all of his children went to Egypt because of him. An exile of hundreds of years, death and sorrow and pain to all of his children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren because of his mistake. A horrible punishment to him, to us, because of him. But did, did we saw that Abraham Avinu bought a bottle of vodka and when to drown his sorrow in the in the booze? No. No. Why? Because he was a man enough to say, I messed up, I was wrong, I'm sorry, and that's it. And he moved on. Because there's nothing to do. Do tshuva and start again. Tshuva means to give yourself another chance to life and live. And now start living. Live your life. Be happy. What did you able to do? Okay, I can't do much. Okay, great. Well, you're going to accept to expect a person that is 90 years old to do more than go to the grocery and buy a few things and eat them and go to rest for his uh, uh, noon, noon, noon schlep? No. Why? Because he's 90. He's weak. And if you're weak and you're only 50, and if you're weak and you're all only 30 or 20, so what? But if you're weak, if you're judging and checking yourself and you find yourself weak, and destroyed with no power, run by trucks of foreign thoughts that are destroying your mind and your heart is shaking already and terrified and, and, and can't deal with life. So you think that Hashem doesn't see that? You think that Hashem is upset on you? No. Hashem wants you to build yourself one part after the other. We are gentle, fragile souls. And Hashem understands it. He's not expecting us to do something that we're not able to do. So what does he want from us? The truth. The heart. Give the heart. Be honest. Be pure. Say the truth. Be who that you are. That's what I want from you. Hashem is saying, be truthful, be loyal, be yourself. Don't lie. Don't act. Don't pretend. Be who that you are. Say, I don't feel like it. No, I don't want to do that. Give me a reason to do that and I'll do it. But until you're going to give me a reason, a happiness, a joyful reason to do it, I'm not able. I'm not functioning like that. I can't stand it. It's too gray. It's too dark. It's too cold. It's not for me, Hashem. I need excitement in life, Hashem. I feel bitterness. I feel down, Hashem. I don't feel you want me to be down. I feel you want me to be happy. I think at least that's who I think you are. No? If not, so something is wrong here. But if so, so okay, Hashem, let's discuss it. What's the right way for me to serve you? When I hear music, I'm happy. Okay, so I'm allowed to hear music. But how much Hasidic music you can hear in a day? Okay, but you're not allowed to hear foreign music. Okay, I don't know. But it makes me happy. Hashem, what's the truth? Ask. When you're going to ask, you're going to be answered. You're going to know the answer that is good for you. And then let's see you keep that. And believe and violate and break the holy tablets in your own house and don't be afraid. Like Moshe. I'm not making up that Torah. Sometimes it's the time to do for Hashem. You need to violate some rules. Amar of Nachman bar Yitzchak in the Gemara Masechet Betzah that there are times that to sin for Hashem is even greater than to keep a mitzvah but not for Hashem. If you keep that mitzvah that your husband will be happy it's amazing, yeah, it's huge, gigantic, so inspiring. Yes, but to sin for Hashem it's even greater than that. אמר רב נחמן בר יצחק, גדולה עבירה לשמה ממצווה שלא לשמה. אני 
I don't know the rules. I don't have the clue what the halacha is. I don't know, but I'm going to do it. Oh, but you were wrong. But what was my intention? All of you, all for Hashem, it counts. It means. When I learned about Netilat Yadai, I first learned about Netilat I was 23. I first time I heard about Netilat Yadai, I was 20. And when I started keeping it, I was 23. And they taught me that you need to wash your hands like that, three on the right hand and three on the left hand for bread. And if you want to, and in the morning when you wake up, you need to wash your hands one after the other. So the same three, but one on the right, one on the left. One on the right, great, wonderful. It's a nice game. I went with it. I was happy. I did it. But after a couple of weeks, I heard another halakha. What was that halakha? That also when you go out of the bathroom, you need to wash your hands. You need to do netila. Great, I was very happy. Why? Because now I had another opportunity to keep another mitzvah. One day I'm going out of the bathroom and I'm washing my hands like that and I'm putting my hands in the air and I'm saying, Baruch Ata Hashem, Elokeinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kideshanu Mitzvotav, Etzivanu Al Netilat Yadayim. And you're not supposed to do that, right? You know the halacha. You're not supposed to say Netilat Yadayim, the blessing, after you go out from the toilet. But I didn't know that. I first of all learned that you need to do netila and you say bracha. On bread, you say bracha. In the morning, you say bracha. And after two weeks, I heard that you need to wash your hands also when you go out from the toilet. Okay, so I did it with bracha. Because that's what I learned. It's true, I was wrong. People didn't guide me right. I was not learning in a religious school. You're right. I didn't know that, but I'm asking you. Those two weeks that I was washing my hands and saying bracha to Hashem, and I was blessing Hashem. I was so happy to bless Hashem after I'm going out from the bathroom. You think there was something wrong with that? I don't feel like something wrong with that. I feel Hashem was very happy. Like a little child that is coming to his parents and trying to talk and he's got many mistakes and he doesn't know the language and they're going to enjoy his mistakes more than their son, the professor that just came out of college and he's such a genius and his mouth and his speech is perfect and they're not going to enjoy from him as they're going to enjoy that little punk. Why? Because he's learning and he's funny and we're also like that. We're learning and we're funny. We're making many mistakes, but we make Hashem laugh. We make Hashem happy. I'm not sure that all of those from, from habit are making Hashem Barach so happy like that we do. I'm sorry. I think that as long as we're putting our heart into serving Him, as much as we can, we're trying, we're satisfying Him and pleasing Him. And when we have a problem, you think he doesn't want to solve that problem? So now, okay, he's coming to you and he tells you, I love you. I want to solve your problems. I'm the answer to all of your problems, to all of your lackings. So now, the next step is that you're going to explain to him all of your problems. I feel alone. I feel poor. What do you mean I feel? I'm poor. I'm alone. I'm broken. I'm sad. I'm depressed. I have paranoia. Fears, anxieties, I'm taking medicines, I want to kill myself. Yesterday I was about to do it. Hashem Yitbarach, what's going on? If that's the truth, that's what you need to say. If you're happy and wealthy and rich, okay, so I'll give you our bank account number. And there's not Hashem, we're going to be partners, share. No problem. But if you feel sorrow, if you feel pain, and you cannot even express it, because we're not talking about those things, because we're not allowed to ask on those topics, because we're not allowed to discuss. What does it mean? Are we in the army or we're serving Hashem? Do we believe in Hashem or its special forces? No, it have to be undercover. Did that? What is going on? It sounds like 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 the the, the, the Soviet Union, like 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 like, like the, the the Germany before the Holocaust. What's going on? That's not the truth. The truth must be said. I don't know how to say that in English, but I'm doing the best that I can. I'm sure you understand. A friend of mine told me, you have a perfect English. I told him, how can you say perfect English? He said, what's the purpose of languages? The people will understand you. In the end, people get your message. He said, yes. He said, that's perfect. That's it. No. 
Stop flowing with that. We must judge ourselves favorably. We must understand ourselves. We must be our own best friends. We must understand that Hashem, He loves us. And if it means something to you, so go with what that it means. If you have a good friend that hurt you, you're going to tell him all the way because he's your best friend. And you believe in him that he loves you enough to listen and to accept your rebuke. And he will listen to us and going to accept our prayers. And that's the only way for us to be really redeemed. The only way, the only way, if we're going to pray from the heart, if we're going to open our hearts and going to express ourselves completely with no fears, with no, no, no barriers, things that will hold us back, with nothing, only to open yourself all the way to cry, to scream, to shout, to beg, to complain, to say, I don't understand. You're not cursing. You're not swearing. You're just begging and crying your heart. You're just saying to Hashem, Baruch, I cannot stand in that sorrow. I cannot feel that pain. Not for me, not for my beloved brothers and sisters. I cannot stand in those tests anymore. Hashem Bezat Hashem will accept our honest prayers and will answer us and will reveal His loving kindness and mercy. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. In this world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator, to remember that it's all He, never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks.